This is the inaugural installment of my clinical skills playlist in obstetrics and gynecology where I will delve into the intricacies of pelvic examination with a particular focus on per speculum examination. Pelvic examination encompasses three components. Per speculum examination which I will elaborate upon today, per vaginal examination and recto vaginal examination conducted when specific gynecological conditions are suspected. For further information on per vaginal examination, please refer to the link provided in the description box below. I recommend watching it after reviewing this section. By the conclusion of this session, students should be proficient in the following. Comprehending the indications for per speculum examination, describing the necessary instruments used, demonstrating the appropriate technique in a step-by-step -step manner, identifying normal findings and recognizing common cervical and vaginal pathologies. A per speculum examination is an indispensable component of every pelvic examination. It facilitates direct visualization of the vaginal walls and cervix. Furthermore, it is essential for conducting diagnostic procedures such as pap smears and cervical biopsies. Family planning procedures, including the insertion and removal of intrauterine devices, also necessitate prior speculum insertion. Certain minor and major operations also require insertion of a vaginal speculum. It is imperative that this procedure be preceded by obtaining informed consent and conducting a per abdominal examination. The indications for per speculum examination can be categorized into three primary areas gynecological, obstetric, and procedural indications. Gynecological indications encompass routine gynecological evaluation of women presenting to the outpatient department, assessment of vaginal discharge, vaginal bleeding or pain, diagnosis of pelvic organ prolapse, stress urinary incontinence, and pelvic organ prolapse quantification, collection of vaginal discharge for hanging drop preparation, and culture. Key indications for per speculum examination in obstetrics include diagnosis of cervicitis, vaginitis, or pregnancy-related cervical lesions like polyps or ectropion, evaluation of vaginal bleeding during pregnancy, for example, threatened miscarriage, placenta previa, and antenatal hemorrhage to localize source and assess cervical changes. Assessment of abnormal or suspicious vaginal discharge suggestive of vaginal infection, premature rupture of membranes, or sexually transmitted infections. Investigation of suspected rupture of membranes in preterm or term pregnancy, including visualization of pooling for ferning. Screening for cervical malignancy or precancerous lesions in pregnant women, such as via a pap smear or a colposcopy. Assessment of trauma, lacerations or prolapse after labor and delivery or evaluation for postpartum complications such as retained products of infection. Identification and documentation of vaginal or cervical abnormalities during prenatal or antenatal visits. Collection of necessary samples for microbiological analysis or cervical cytology. It must be noted that many obstetric care protocols in India and elsewhere make per speculum examination at booking discretionary rather than mandatory reserving it for situations where relevant symptoms or historical risk factors exist. The following procedures and operations necessitate per speculum examination. OPD procedures such as pap smear, cervical biopsy, IUCD insertion or removal, colposcopy, application of Lugol's iodine, visual inspection with acetic acid and LEDs. Radiology department procedures include hysterosarpingography and saline infusion sonography. Different types of specula may also be required for major and minor operations in operation theater such as DNC, hysteroscopy, suction evacuation, anterior and or posterior corporophy, VVF repair and vaginal hysterectomy. Per speculum examination is contraindicated in children and virginal patients 
unless essential, acute pelvic infections, which is a relative contraindication. When doing per speculum examination during pregnancy, exercise caution, especially in the first trimester. The cervical and vaginal mucosa are congested during pregnancy and hence always ensure gentle technique to avoid trauma. The following instruments are essential for upper speculum examination. Cuspco's self-retaining bivalve speculum or Sims speculum with an anterior vaginal wall retractor are the most commonly used. However, for the diagnosis of pelvic organ prolapse, Cuspco's speculum cannot be utilized, making Sims speculum the most suitable choice. When performing gynecological procedures in an outpatient department, such as the insertion or removal of intrauterine devices or cervical biopsies, Cusco speculum is ideal due to its ability to stabilize the cervix and its self-retaining nature. Sterile gloves, adequate lighting, cotton swab, saline and acetic acid if necessary. Prior to conducting a purse speculum examination, provide the patient with a comprehensive explanation of the procedure and obtain her informed consent. Prioritize the patient's privacy and comfort. Instruct the patient to void her bladder completely. The optimal position for a per speculum examination is dorsal lithotomy with appropriate draping in place as shown here. It is imperative that the buttocks be positioned well beyond the edge of the examination table, especially during surgical procedures. Adhere to strict aseptic practices throughout the procedure. The method of introduction is as follows. Sims as well as Cusco's specula are available in three sizes, small, medium and large. Choose the appropriate size speculum. Warm and lubricate the speculum using water-based gel. Ask the patient to relax her body. Hold Cusco's speculum in your right hand. With the blades closed, the handle is placed transversely with the blades aligned along the anterior posterior diameter of the vulva vaginal outlet. Separate the labia with your left hand. Gently introduce the speculum obliquely along the posterior vaginal wall. Then rotate the speculum by 90 degrees so that the blades are positioned anteriorly and posteriorly. Tilt the speculum to a horizontal position and slowly open the blades. In a multiparous patient with lax vaginal walls, the speculum can be introduced directly with the blades placed anteriorly and posteriorly. Identify the vaginal walls, noting their color, rugosity, lesions and discharge. Visualize the cervix, noting its shape, size and surface. Look for erosions, ectopy, ulcers and growths on the cervix. A round or pinpoint external os suggests nulliparity, while a patulous os indicates multiparity. Look for the presence of discharge or bleeding. Lastly, ask the patient to cough or perform a valsalva maneuver to detect cervical vaginal prolapse. For the diagnosis of stress urinary incontinence, a speculum examination must be performed with a full bladder. Urine spurts coinciding with coughing or straining by the patient suggest stress urinary incontinence. Summarize and document your findings as follows. I have performed per speculum examination on Mrs. XYZ, a 27-year-old female. The vaginal walls exhibit a pink, moist and rugose appearance. The cervix presents a smooth, pink and healthy epithelium. In nulliparous women, the external os is pinpoint, while in multiparous women, it appears slit-like. There is no abnormal discharge or lesions observed on the cervix or vaginal walls. Additionally, there is no descent of the cervix and or vagina upon coughing or valsalva maneuver, indicating the absence of pelvic organ prolapse. These findings suggest that the per speculum examination results are normal. Lastly, proceed to describe the findings on per vaginal examination which you have done. During the per speculum examination, several abnormal findings may be observed. These include curdy white discharge or greenish frothy discharge, purulent and foul swelling vaginal discharge is indicative of vaginitis. 
the cervix may reveal abnormal findings such as cervical erosion, ectropion, cervical polyps, ulcers or neoplastic growths. Vesicles or ulcers may indicate herpes or syphilis. Bleeding on touch is suspicious for carcinoma of cervix. The descent of cervix and or vagina is indicative of pelvic organ prolapse. Carefully unscrew and close the blades of Cusco speculum completely. Do not allow the lax vaginal walls to get pinched between the blades when closing them. Rotate the blades and handle by 90 degrees to align with the anterior posterior diameter of the vulvovaginal opening. Slowly withdraw the speculum. During the withdrawal process, inspect the vaginal walls for any abnormalities. Ensure the patient's comfort and maintain her dignity throughout the procedure. Finally, systematically record per speculum examination findings. Vaginal walls and cervix record their appearance, lesions and discharge if any. Any procedure performed correlate with clinical presentation. Per speculum examination is an essential component of gynecological practice. It necessitates proper consent, aseptic technique and a gentle approach. This examination provides crucial information regarding the vagina and cervix. It aids in the diagnosis and screening of prevalent gynecological conditions. The utilization of a self-retaining speculum enables the performance of numerous gynecological procedures. Finally, after extensive discussion, I propose a speculative analysis of the relevance of the speculum examination in contemporary gynecological practice. Classical medical teachings consider the pelvic examination, including per speculum examination, a fundamental component of gynecological practice for female patients presenting with gynecological complaints. However, the utility of the per speculum examination, or rather the entire pelvic examination, as a diagnostic tool has been questioned due to its discomfort for the patient and the time and privacy required for its appropriate utilization, which can be quite inconvenient. Given the expanded availability of pelvic ultrasound and vaginoscopy, it is uncertain whether the speculum examination is always necessary. While some medical textbooks suggest that pelvic examination may be beneficial, there are many, particularly in the Western world, who believe that it is time to abandon this uncomfortable procedure. To navigate the diametrically opposite views, let me discuss the pros and cons of the procedure. Despite its diagnostic utility, traditional speculum design often causes discomfort, anxiety or trauma for many women, particularly those with prior negative experiences or sensitive clinical backgrounds. There is a growing consensus against routine speculum examination in asymptomatic average risk women favoring targeted use driven by symptoms, screening schedules or clinical suspension. Guidelines now frequently recommend omission or deferment of the speculum examination in certain consultations, sexually transmitted infection screening and adolescent care unless clinically indicated. However, the Procedure remains mandatory for indicated diagnostic screening and interventional procedures, for example, pap smear, colposcopy, intrauterine device placement, etc. Emerging technologies such as vaginoscopy, artificial intelligence, AI guided cervicography, novel speculum designs, and simulation based training are reshaping both the technique and provider proficiency, aiming to reduce disparities in care and improve screening outcomes. AI-guided cervicography is an emerging tool for automated cervical cancer screening and triage, leveraging AI's pattern recognition capabilities to enhance reproducibility, scale and efficiency in gynecological diagnostics. Since modern, well-informed women demand non-invasive assessment and shared decision making. This is how I approach pelvic examination 
in contemporary obstetrics and gynecological practice. I will discuss the details and utility of the pelvic examination procedure with the patient. If she strongly prefers not to have a pelvic examination, I will comply. I will then recommend newer options like pelvic ultrasonography or vaginoscopy, which is now an office procedure, depending upon the pathology suspected. As an alternative to pap smear, which must be routinely performed, and for the diagnosis of suspected sexually transmitted infections, I will provide her with instructions for self swabbing and send the specimen to the lab. In summary, while speculum examination is no longer universal for all gynecological consultations, it remains a cornerstone of diagnostic and preventive gynecological care with modern practice striving for patient comfort, targeted indications and technological innovation. Let me know in the comments box below whether you agree or disagree with my monologue. Lastly, an appeal to students attending this master class. Please read my textbooks Modern Gynecology, Modern Obstetrics whose new fourth edition has just been released and the ever popular Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology. I have also published two question answer books which are particularly useful for exam going students. These are Clinical Cases in Obstetrics, 1000 plus questions and answers and Clinical Cases in Gynecology, 1000 plus questions and answers. These are also available on Amazon.in. You can also follow me on other social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram. The links are given here. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching.